Okay, so today we're going to be uh, talking about domains of functions. Um, this isn't like specifically a lesson in the book, it's just something I want to throw in here because it's going to be something that we're going to be talking about a lot. Um, so I've talked about this in the past, but I want to make it a, a formal lesson now. This idea of the three red flags for domain. So there's three things that should not happen in a function, right? First thing is you can, you can never divide by zero. Right? That's something that obviously cannot happen. The second thing is you should never have a negative inside of a square root or any other even root. And we'll talk about what that means later in the year. We'll get into fourth roots and sixth roots, any even roots. Cube roots is a third root, that's an odd root. But even roots like square roots, you can't do negatives. And then the last thing is gonna be uh, zero or negative inside of a logarithm. We'll get to that later this year, so I won't talk about that today. The worksheet we're doing today is just gonna be for the first two red flag, okay? So your job is to make sure that none of the functions below violate these two red flags right here. Zero denominator and negative inside of a square root. So I had you guys do one and two as a do now. Let's take a look at these. So for number one, which red flags might be violated by number one? Zero denominator, right? There's no radical here, so there's no chance of a negative and a square root, right? So you look for which you look for which red flag applies. Sometimes it's more than one, right? All right, so you don't want there to be a zero denominator here. How do you know if that can happen and where it will happen? So you don't want the denominator equal zero, so what you do is you set the denominator equal to zero to see what numbers would make that happen, right? So I don't want x plus five to equal zero, so what I wanna say is, all right, well, I don't want x plus five, or x plus five should not equal zero in my function, all right? If that's the case, what x would make that happen? You solve that equation. Now, I know I have a slash through the equal sign. That's just to remind me that I'm actually finding what it shouldn't be, not what it should be. So this is an equation with a not equal to sign there. Uh, I'm gonna subtract five from both sides. I get x should not equal five. So what's the domain of this function? Well, here's the thing. Let's go back to those notes, okay? You start with the assumption that a function has a domain of all real numbers. All real numbers is, the do is, is what you start with. And then from there, you look for exceptions. So we've clearly found an exception. This, this function can handle, um, any number you put in except for the number negative five. So what do we say? What's the domain? The domain is all real numbers, but instead of writing out all real numbers as a sentence, you can just write this double back R. So what you do is you write two lines really close to each other and then make an R on the left-hand line like that. Okay, that's, that's the easiest way to do the double back R. So make like an 11 and then make an R on the back, you know, on the, on the left-hand line, okay? So all real numbers, and then, but with, with a qualification, which is, and so the qualification, it, this can be written a lot of different ways, but I'm just gonna have you guys do it this way. All real numbers with a colon after it, the colon means such that, and then x is not equal to negative five. Okay, you can box that, that's how you'll, I'll, I'll take the domains from you guys. Now, in college, you might have to do something like this. Set notation, x, such that x is an element of the real numbers, okay, comma, x is not equal to negative five, close the brace. I'm not gonna make you do all that, okay? So I'm keeping it simple, all right? This is a very, very stripped down version of that. Real numbers such that x is not equal to five and you're done, okay? Now, by the way, if you're writing this function, you actually are supposed to, if you're a textbook, you're supposed to put comma, x is not equal to what here? Negative five, right, that's the domain constraints we talked about. So that's how you find the domain constraints, by finding the domain. So this is the domain of f of x. Let's do number two now. Number two, what red flag applies to number two? So yeah, the thing that can happen with number two is that you could have a negative inside of a radical because there is a radical here, okay? Now, it doesn't apply to odd roots. So if you had a third root here, you'd be fine. That's the cube roots are fine. We'll talk about those later on in the year. But a fourth root, no good. A fifth root, fine. A sixth root, no good. If it's an even root, and by the way, a square root is a second root. We don't write the two, but it's a second root. Uh, if it's a square root, you can't have a negative inside. So how do we make sure what's inside the square root is not negative? Okay, what's the definition of not negative? It's not just positive. Non-negative means either, either zero, because zero is not positive or negative, or positive, zero or positive, meaning equal to zero or greater than zero. So what you wanna do is take this thing that's inside the radical here. Some people call it the radicand. Some people refer to it as the argument of the square root. Either way, take this argument right here, this x plus five, 
And what you're gonna do for a radical is set it greater than or equal to zero. In other words, you're saying it has to be positive. Now, when is it positive? You solve this inequality. What do I do? Subtract five from both sides, right? So I get x is greater than or equal to negative five. That should be the only, those should be the only numbers that will work in here. So let's test this theory. If I choose a number that's less than negative five, like negative six, what happens if I put a negative six in here? Negative six plus five is negative one. I'm trying to square root of negative one. That can't happen, right? You'll get into complex territory, imaginary numbers. I don't want that today. Okay, what if I did exactly five? What would this be here? Negative five, sorry, exactly negative five, rather. It'd be negative five plus five, which is zero. Can you square root zero? Sure, zero is okay, but negative, uh, sorry, but negative numbers are no good. Anything above negative five, like negative four, what happens if I put a negative four here? That would be a positive one, that's fine as well, and everything above that. So here we go, what's the domain? Once again, it's all real numbers, colon meaning such that, and then you can just write what you found out, which is x has to be greater than or equal to negative five. Okay, we'll take that uh, you know, in this class. All right, let's do a few more examples just to make sure we got this. Here's uh, number three. Which of the red flags might be violated by number three? The first one, which is dividing by zero, or the second one, which is a negative and a square root? The first one, okay. So we wanna make sure the first one doesn't happen. What do we do again? We take the denominator and do what? Set it equal to zero. So for denominators, you set them equal to zero. For square roots, you set them greater than or equal to zero. That's the difference. So this one we're gonna set equal to zero. So we have to solve this quadratic equation here. It's a pretty easy one. What should I do first? Right, there's a GCF, so I should factor that out. So factor out the x, and I get x times x minus six equals zero. And now we use a zero product rule, we can set each one of these equal to zero, right? And what do we get as our two solutions? We get x equals zero and x equals six. Those are the two numbers that you don't want in your function. So like I said before, I'm just gonna like put a, a, a slash through here just to remind me, these are the numbers I don't want in my function, right? In my domain. So let me zoom out a little bit here and write my domain. My domain is, okay, what do I write first? All real numbers. You start with the assumption that you're starting with all real numbers. So double back R like that, right? Colon for such that. And then you can just put these things with a comma in between each. X is not equal to zero, comma X is not equal to six. Let's try number four on the worksheet. Okay, number four is gonna be a little more complicated than, uh, it's gonna require a skill that we haven't really uh, covered this year, so we're gonna have to teach you this from scratch. All right, so number four, which red flag can be violated by number four? The negative inside the square root, the second red flag, right? Okay, so we have to make sure the thing inside the square root is not negative. Once again, not negative means greater than or equal to zero, yes? Okay. So I'll take the argument of the, rad you know, the radicand here and I'll set it greater than or equal to zero, like this. And this is gonna tell me uh, you know, when this thing is positive. So this is what I wanna keep. In the last problem, it's what I wanted to get rid of, right? What I wanted to x not equal to. This is the opposite, this is kind of what I want it to be. So I'm setting it greater than or equal to zero to see what it, it can be, what it should be. And whatever I get is gonna be the answer. However, this is a little different because, okay, look at the last problem we did here with the radical. We just took the inside, the radicand, and we set it greater than or equal zero. We solved and we were done. That was it. It was pretty simple. This one, unfortunately, is going to be a little more complicated because this is a quadratic. And it's a little more complicated, uh, you know, to do this. So this, I'm going to show you the easiest way to do this. Okay, so... Let's treat it like an equation. What would you do if this was an equation? You would factor it, right? Like we did a minute ago. It's actually the same exact expression. So we'll factor out the x, and we get x times x minus six, and then we still have our greater than or equal to zero here, okay? Now, in the last problem, I set these equal to zero, equal to zero, right? And that gave me when this is equal to zero, but it doesn't really tell me anything about when it's greater than zero. So here's what we're gonna do. This is brand new now, so get ready. Take some notes on this. We're gonna make a number line. Okay, we're gonna do what's called a number line analysis. We do lots of this in calculus. You'll be do some of this in pre-calculus. It's really super easy, but it's different, okay? Here's what you do. You figure out where the function equals zero, which we just did, zero and six, yes? Easy. Put down the zero, put down the six. Now, what we don't know is where is this function actually this expression here, x squared minus six x, where is this thing negative and where is it positive? Because it isn't clear from here. 
because you could have one factor be positive and one factor be negative, so on and so forth. So what we'll do is this. There's, there are three areas created on this number line. There's the area less than zero, there's the area between zero and six, and there's the area from six and above, or actually above six. Zero, we know that this equals zero. Six, we know this equals zero. Think about it. If you plug a zero in here, this is zero squared minus six times zero, it is zero, right? If you plug a six in here, this would be six squared, which is 36, minus six times six, which is also 36, and that would give you a zero. So both zero and six, we know give you a zero because we did the work, right? We did the, uh, the factors and we use a zero product rule. We already know that it, you know, this thing is zero here and zero here, but in between those things, it's gotta be either positive or negative. It's not gonna be more than one of those things. So pick one number in each area and test it. That's all you're doing here. So pick a number between zero and six. Now, hint, pick a, the smallest number you can. What's the smallest number between zero and six that you can use to plug into here? One. So plug a one into here and see if you get a positive or negative result. One squared minus six times one. That's one minus six, which is what? Negative. Now, do I have to try two, three, four, and five? No, they will all be the same. The only place you can change is at the zero and the six. Everything else has to be the same. So just by picking any number in between and testing it by sticking it in there, you'll see if it's positive or negative. So now we know everything between zero and six, not including zero and six, but everything greater than zero and less than six will be negative and we cannot put it in our domain. It's gotta be out of the domain. Now, what about anything greater than six? Pick a number greater than six, the smallest possible. Seven, okay. Okay, if you put a seven in here, you get seven squared minus six times seven, which is 49 minus 42. Is that positive or negative? That's positive, so any seven is positive. Well, that means so is eight, so is nine, so is three billion, through three trillion. It's all gonna be positive after six. Now, what about less than zero? Pick a number that's less than zero, as simple as possible. Negative one, right? Plug in a negative one here. What's negative one squared? One, minus six times negative one. What's that? Positive six. So I'm getting one minus negative six, which is so one plus six, which is seven. So that means this is gonna be positive. And there you go. Now you know which parts of this function are gonna be, which x's rather, give you positive results under, under the radical, which give you negative, and which give you po uh, positive again. Now, I'm gonna show you something that I do with my calc kids. That is a big shortcut. Makes this faster and easier, okay? How about we just do, we redo all these tests, but we don't use that top original function. We use the factored form. Watch this now. Let's say I decide to test negative one and I plug in negative one, not up here, but down here. If I put a negative one in, this is a factor by the way, even though it doesn't have parentheses around it, it's a factor. It's the greatest common factor. If I plug a negative one in here, is this a negative factor or a positive factor? If I put a negative one into that factor, it's negative, right. If I put a negative one into this factor for x, that'll be what? Negative seven, right? Negative one, negative six, negative seven. So it'll be negative times negative, and negative times negative is what? Positive, all right? Now let's do it for the middle. We picked the, the positive one for the middle, right? If this is positive one, that's a positive factor, and if x is positive one here, one minus six is what? Negative, and negative times positive, or sorry, positive times negative is negative. I don't have to actually do the math. I can just look at the sign of each, uh, what do you call it, of each uh, factor and multiply them. How about this last one, seven? We chose seven last time, right? If this is a seven, it's positive, yes? If this is a seven, what is this gonna be? Seven minus six, which is what? Positive. Just the sign of it. Don't even worry about the arithmetic, the sign. Positive times positive gives you positive. That's the easy way to do it. You don't have to even calculate the numbers. Just look at the sign. So there you go. So what does this tell me? Okay, the domain of this, of number four, domain of m of x is gonna be all real numbers such that, and now here's the deal, I have to be less than or equal to zero, but greater than or equal to six. That's all where it works. So I could, I'll just do this with two different inequalities. X is less than or equal to zero, comma, x, actually the word is or, this is an or statement, or, x is greater than or equal to six. There you go, nothing in between. You can't have a one, two, three, four, five, any decimals in between don't work, but you, that's, there it goes. So that was new, number line analysis, 
that's probably the biggest part of this lesson that you haven't seen before. Yeah. Okay, let's try number five here. What red flags can happen with number five? One and two? Yeah. The first one is, do you have a denominator? Because if you do and there's an X in the denominator, that denominator might be zero. Do we have an X in the denominator? Yeah. So the denominator might equal zero. That's the first red flag. The second red flag is, do we have a radical, a square root? Yeah, we have both. We have a denominator and a square root, so both of them can happen. And if both of them can happen, then I have to check both of them. Okay? So here we go. Let's do both. Let's, do, let's start with the first red flag. How can the denominator possibly equal zero? Set the denominator equal to zero. Okay? So for the denominator, we're going to take the whole denominator, this thing right here, and set it equal to zero. And let's see what x's make that zero. So the first thing I have to do here is what? Add three, right? So I'll add three to both sides. I get square root of x plus two equals three. Now what do I do to get the x by itself? I need to get rid of that square root. What do I do? Square both sides. And now I have x plus two equals nine. And then subtract two from both sides, x equals seven. So that's what's gonna create a zero in the denominator, x equals seven. Don't want that, so that's gonna be part of my domain. It's gonna be x is not equal to seven, yes? Okay, that takes care of the first red flag. The second red flag is this square root here, this square root should not have a zero, uh, sorry, a negative in it, right? So I'm gonna take the, just the part that's inside the radical, x plus two, and what do I do with this? Set it what? Greater than or equal to zero. You can see very clearly what the difference is. For denominators, you set greater than zero. For square roots, you set greater than or equal to zero. And solve. Well, this says that x has to be greater than or equal to what? Negative two. That's it. Those are the two things. So now I can write my answer. The domain of f of x will be all real numbers such that x is greater than or equal to negative two, comma, x is not equal to seven. Because you can still, uh, you know, if you're greater than negative two, you can equal seven, so I put the seven afterwards, all right? It's like all the numbers, if you look at it on a number line, here's negative two, it's everything starting at negative two going to infinity, except there's a hole right here at seven. That's the only one that's not there, okay? Okay, number six. What red flags might be apl applicable for number six? Again, both, right? Because we have two things. We have a denominator with an X in it, so that means we could have a zero denominator, and we also have, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a radical. So let's do the denominator first. Let's set the denominator, which is this whole square root thing, equal to zero. And let's see what we get. Okay, well, what's the first thing I have to do here? I'm gonna square both sides, right? And I get nine minus X squared equals zero. I'll subtract nine from both sides to get negative x squared equals negative nine. I'll multiply both sides by negative one, which gives me x squared equals nine. I'll square root both sides, which give me x equals, well, absolute value of x actually equals three. And then I'll get, I'll drop the bars and get x equals plus or minus three. So those are the two numbers that can't, that will crash the function. I don't want to be equal to those two. That takes care of the denominator, okay? Now, for the radical part. Okay, so uh, what about the radical? The radical, we take what's inside the radical, okay, which is nine minus x squared, and we do what to it? We set it greater than or equal to zero, like that. So for this one, we're gonna do a couple things here. We'll subtract nine from both sides, so we get negative x squared is greater than or equal to negative nine, and then I wanna get rid of the negative, so I'll multiply both sides or divide both sides by negative one, and I'll get x squared is greater than or equal to nine. Yes or no? No, I've made a mistake. What mistake did I make? I'll give you a hint. What does D band stand for? Divide by a negative. I divided both sides by a negative, and when you do that, what do you have to do? Flip the inequality. The less than becomes a greater than or vice versa. So don't forget about D band. Be on the lookout for D band. All right, so we have that now, and then we can square root both sides. And if we square root both sides like this, what's the square root of x squared? Absolute value of x. What's the square root of nine? Three. Oh, this looks like something from October or September. This is t bar with an inequality. So if you remember how we did this, here we would just copy this without the bars. 
Here, we would copy it, but we do two things to it. You guys remember what we did? We flipped the inequality and we flipped the sign of the thing on the right. So now we have all this. Okay, so what does this look like now? Just give me a second here. If we look at this on the number line, it's a little less confusing. You have three and you have negative three. You're supposed to be everything less than three going this way, everything greater than negative three going this way. Now, according to these, they're underlined. I should be filling in these circles, but what does this say? You can't equal three or negative three. So they're open circles. So how do you write this as an inequality? Well, or the final answer rather, it's gonna be all real numbers such that, and you're just gonna be three less than X less than three because you can't be equal to any of these threes. Okay, that was number uh, six. How about number seven here? So number seven, ooh, look at that. I guess it's a pretty safe bet that we got both red flags to worry about here, right? Denominator and radical. And they're separate in two separate parts, that's fine. Let's just, once again, just address them one at a time. This can equal zero, so I'm gonna set it equal to zero and find out where that can happen. So x squared minus 25, I don't want that to equal zero. So what can I do here? Well, I can factor that, it's a difference of squares, right? So x plus five, x minus five. I don't want that to equal zero. Well, when does that happen? It happens at what? x equals five, x equals negative five. Pretty clear, right? So that's done. x can't equal five and x can't equal negative five. Well, technically, negative five is the first one. So that takes care of the denominator issue. What about the radical issue, this one here? Well, I need to take what's under the radical, the radicand here, the argument of the square root, and set it what? Greater than or equal to zero. So here we go. Well, this one's factorable, isn't it? So I can just do this. X minus three, X minus one. That'll do the trick. So here's the problem though. I know I'm gonna get three and one as my zeros of the function, right? But I don't know which direction things are going on the number line. So let's do the number line analysis. My two zeros are X equals three and X equals one. So I'll put down the one and the three. And now once again, just pick numbers in each area to test the sign in that area. So what's a good number between one and three that we can choose for the middle? Two, two is perfect. All right, let's do two. So once again, use the factors, it's easier. If you plug a two in here, is this positive or negative? Negative, because two minus three, right? And if you plug a two in here, is this positive or negative? Two minus one is positive. So you got two minus three, which is a negative, times a positive, that's gonna be negative in the middle. Okay, let's pick a number on the left. What's the best number on the left here that's less than one? Zero, that's what I was thinking before. Okay, plug in a zero. Is this positive or negative? Negative. Is this positive or negative? Negative. Negative times negative is what? Positive. Now three, pick something greater than three. Four. Four minus three is positive. Four minus one is positive. Positive times positive is positive. So what are we gonna use? We're gonna use everything less than one and greater than three. Less than or equal to one, I mean, and greater than or equal to three, because we could be greater than or equal to these things. All right, so what's our answer here? The domain is gonna be all real numbers, such that, okay, I'll do the inequalities first. I want all the numbers that are great, less, sorry, x is uh, less than or equal to one, x is greater than or equal to three, and x cannot equal negative five or five. That's kind of a complicated one in terms of how many details there are, but there you go. There's a part of me that wants to put the word or in between here because this is an or statement, but that's not a big deal. Uh, number eight, we have the same thing. We have a radical and a denominator, but something interesting is gonna happen here. This is where like a little bit of experience comes in handy. If you look at, okay, so th let's do the denominator first. If you look at this denominator, is there any possible way that this denominator could equal zero? Now we could do the work. We could go ahead and say, all right, x squared plus one equals zero, but when you get to pre-calc and calc, you'll start, you'll look at this right away and know what the answer is. Because in order for this to be a zero, this would have to equal negative one, yes? Because negative one plus one is zero. Is there any way an x squared could equal negative one? Can a square equal a negative anything? No, there's no way. There's no number you can plug in here. If you plug in zero, it's zero squared plus one, that's fine. 
Okay, what you're thinking is, what if I plug a negative one here? Well, negative one squared is positive one, not possible. But I can prove it to you by doing it over here. This is the old-fashioned way. We'll subtract one from both sides, and we get x squared equals negative one, which is what I was saying. And then when you square root both sides, right away you realize you're doing what? Imaginary numbers. So there's no possibility of a zero denominator, first thing. Second thing, now look at this. Is there any possibility that this could be negative? x squared has to be a positive number no matter what, or zero. It could be zero or positive. It cannot be negative because it's squared. So if you add a non-negative number to four, can you possibly get a negative? No. So what's the domain of this function? All real numbers and done. That's the only time we've seen that where it's just plain old all real numbers and no exceptions. Now I can prove to you if I wanted to you know, do it by hand here, x squared plus four greater than or equal to zero, and what's gonna happen is, x squared greater than or equal to negative four, right away you realize you know, it will be greater than or equal to zero for all real numbers, I mean. It, it's not gonna be negative, is what I'm saying. The number line will be all positive, is what I'm gonna say when we do the number line analysis. All right, number nine, uh, f of x equals these two things. There's no denominators to worry about, but there's two square roots, and you do have to do both square roots. So I'll do the x squared minus one has to be greater than or equal to zero, and I'll do the nine minus x squared that also has to be greater than or equal to zero because it's also a radical. The easiest way to do this one is to just add one to both sides, square root both sides, you get absolute value of x is greater than one, and then you t-bar. You get x is greater than or equal to one, x is less than or equal to negative one. Same thing over here. Subtract nine from both sides. Um, multiply both sides or divide both sides by negative one, that's d-band, so flip the inequality, Square root both sides, absolute value of x is less than or equal to three, and then t-bar that. And you get a bunch of these things, you have to just put them all together basically. Um, actually, let's put them on a number line real quick here. So I have negative three, negative one, positive three, sorry, positive one and positive three. I have to be greater than negative three according to this one here, going that way, and less than positive three going this way but on the one, I have to be less than negative one going this way and greater than positive one going this way. It's gonna be negative three less than or equal to x less than or equal to one and, or, or actually, um, positive one less than or equal to x less than or equal to three. It's actually two different things here. And I'll put a real number there and there it is. Okay, we're done here and that's it. See you at the next video. Check it.